Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes. Uh, today, I want to go over a little bit about neurological complaints that you might encounter out in the field. And I think what is important is that not these sort of complaints um, are part of your assessment, but can be a little uh, leading for you, right? It, it can lead you in paths to make you think that something is going on with the patient that is neurologic in nature, okay? So I just want to go over these so that if you see these types of complaints with your patients, it might make you think that something neurological is going on with them, okay? Now you got to keep in mind, like I said, these complaints as part of your assessment are a little unique. And when you're assessing patients where you might be suspicious of some sort of neurologic event going on, you are going to be seeing and asking sort of unique questions and unique uh, signs and symptoms in order to sort of get your assessment going and to give you a better clinical picture, okay? So what you want to do is try to see who's talking, right? Is it the patient? Is it the family? Is it the bystander or a caretaker, a home health aide, a visiting nurse, uh, something like that, right? Are they... Uh, reliable, okay? Are they unreliable when it comes to the history that you're trying to obtain, okay? Ask the relevant questions to figure out if they have enough information to provide you as you're going on in your assessment. Now, chief complaint for these patients, you want to get the history of their present illness, right? Find out what the patient is feeling, what they're experiencing. And Two of the most common complaints, actually, that uh, a lot of uh, you, you might see in, in EMS, right, are things like headache or backache. And actually, in the emergency room, these complaints without a direct, um, you know, cause is uh, considered neurological until they can prove otherwise. So keep that in mind if your patient's complaining of a headache or a backache. And you get dizziness, right, dizziness or vertigo. Now, you have to find out, is the is the person that's spinning, do they feel that like they're dizzy, like they're spinning, or is it their environment that's spinning, okay? Uh, that vestibule uh, nerve going on, making the environment spin, and not necessarily the, the patient feeling that like they're spinning, okay? You know, do they feel they're spinning, or they feel like the bed is moving around them, or the, the room is moving around them, okay? Try to find that out if you can. And lightheadedness, or, or, or dizziness, faintness right? Is it affected by the patient's position, okay? If they sit up, lay down, stand up, does that lightheadedness change? And what about loss of consciousness? A lot of times, patients and families, they're not really quite sure or they're going to deny it, okay? Ask appropriate questions to find out if the patient had a loss of consciousness. Ask them if they, they passed out. Ask them if they lost consciousness, a lot of times they're not going to understand 100%, or they might say yes or no, thinking that's what you want to hear. Ask them questions like, do you remember the entire event, or what happened right after you fell down? Things like that can sort of lead you to believe that they did have a loss of consciousness. And what about visual disturbances? Now, this is kind of tricky, right, because this is sort of more in-depth when you're looking at the patient assessment. Um, but, you know, are they having problems seeing? Is it one eye or both eyes? Does it happen all the time? Is it kind of coming and going? Um, is the vision blurred? Are they complaining of, of blurred vision or double vision, right? All things to sort of lead you on the path that something neurological might be going on. Other things on, on visual, disturb visual disturbances, too, is is do they have a sort of a weight? The images the patient's looking at, are they wavy? In, in appearance, right? That could be from a, a migraine, right? Uh, maybe they tell you feel that like they have a curtain being drawn over what they're looking at, right? And that could be a detached retina might be causing that. Or the patient might be saying they're having rainbows or, or, or uh, halos looking at that, right? That could be glaucoma happening, right? Or you can have something where a patient is complaining that things sort of look yellowish to them. It's got a yellowish hue. And that could be a digitalis toxicity. 
So these are some other reasons for visual disturbances. And if you see the patient complaining of this and you find out that these other things, they have a history of migraines or they're taking um, a digitalis medication, uh, things like that, it might be able to help you a little bit when it comes to what it is is going on with the patient. So just keep that in mind. It's not the overall rule out, right? But it can lead you on the path that maybe it's not neurological and just something for you to document, something for you to pass on to the emergency department when you get there. And of course, look for see if the patient has any loss of, of motor uh, ability, sensory or speech, okay? Even a little bit might lead you to believe there is some sort of neurological issue going on. And of course, always thinking about associated issues with this type of thing, guys. Of course, alter mental status. Patient might just have general weakness. Maybe they're uncoordinated, right? Maybe they have uh, tremors, all right? All these types of things should lead you on the path to be thinking that it might be something neurological going on, okay? Guys, remember, these sort of assessments, right, they're, they are unique to the patient that you might be considering having a neurological event happening, okay? So when I talk about these sort of complaints and these sort of issues, it's just a way for you to assess these patients a little bit better if you're suspecting some sort of type of neurological event going on, okay, and to lead you on the path and to ask and focus on these key areas uh, to try to either go for or against or a neurological event going on. So I hope you can use these Monday Minutes, guys. Um, listen, go check out the National Registry Success Course. If you're taking the National Registry exam or pretty much any exam, this course can help you because it's really guided to help you how to take EMS exam. There's over six hours of video. There's a bunch of great bonus downloads there as well for you, including a interview that we did with the National Registry uh, Associate Director on the NREMT exam and what they look for and what and how they they uh, formulate the National Registry exam, okay? Giving you stumbling blocks, what's expected on the exam, and things that you're going to look to and you're going to be encountering when you take the test, okay? I've also just included over 400 paramedic general knowledge questions there, and you also get access to the NREM, NRE SIM web app as well uh, to go ahead and take uh, some practice exams there and the NRE SIM is a a sort of like an online software that'll turn off when you reach a certain point uh, re you know, whether you're going to pass or fail uh, the exam a certain um, uh, thresholds okay so go check that out maybe get a little bit of a feel to what the uh, National Registry exam might be like okay go check it out click the join now button here get all the details on what's included in this course and I think this is going to really help you succeed when you take a National Registry exam. Whether you're an EMT or a paramedic candidate, I think this can really help you. So again, hope you can use these Monday Minutes. Um, if you have some minutes of your own, as always, feel free to send them over to me. My email is jhoff at emsseo.com. I'd love to go ahead and create a little presentation here on based on some minutes that you think would be important to the EMS community, what you think EMS providers might find beneficial. So I'll be sure to go ahead and do that. So go ahead and leave them to me again. Email jhoff at emssco.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours. Stay safe.